Hi, kids. So where we left off, Stanley was freed from the hole. He climbed himself out. And then the his his lawyer was there to protect him and get him out. And then Zero also pointed out that the suitcase had Stanley's name on it. Strangely enough. Chapter 48. They slowly walked back to camp. The tall man was the Texas Attorney General, the chief law enforcement officer for the state. Stanley's lawyer was named Ms. Marengo. Stanley held the suitcase. He was so tired he couldn't think straight. He felt as he was walking in a dream, not quite able to comprehend what was going on around him. He stopped in front of the camp office. Mr. Sir went inside to get Stanley's belongings. The attorney general told Mr. Pandansky to get the boys something to eat, to drink, and eat. The warden seemed as dazed as Stanley. You can't even read, she said to Zero. Zero said nothing. Ms. Marengo put a hand on Stanley's shoulder and told him to hang in there. He would be seeing his parents soon. She was shorter than Stanley, but somehow gave the appearance of being tall. Mr. Pandansky returned with two cartons of orange juice and two bagels. Stanley drank the juice, but didn't feel like eating anything. Wait, the warden explained. I didn't say they stole the suitcase. It's his suitcase, obviously but he put my things from my cabin inside it. That isn't what you said earlier, said Ms. Marengo. What's in the suitcase? The, wa the warden asked Stanley. Tell us what's in there. We'll open it and see. Stanley didn't know what to do. Stanley, as your lawyer, I advise you not to open your suitcase, said Ms. Marengo. He has to open it, said the warden. I have the right to check the personal property of any of the detainees. How do I know there aren't drugs or weapons in there? You stole a car, too. I've got witnesses. She was nearly hysterical. He's no longer under your jurisdiction, said Stanley's lawyer. He has not been officially released, said the warden. Open the suitcase, Stanley. Do not open it, said Stanley's lawyer. Stanley did nothing. Mr. Sir returned from the office with Stanley's backpack and clothes. The attorney general handed Ms. Marengo a sheet of paper. You're free to go, he said to Stanley. I know you're anxious to get out of here, so you can just keep the orange suit as a souvenir. Or burn it, whatever you want. Good luck, Stanley. He reached out his hand to shake, but Ms. Marengo hurried Stanley away. Come on, Stanley, she said. We have a lot to talk about. Stanley stopped and turned to look at Zero. He couldn't just leave him here. Zero gave him a thumbs up. I can't leave Hector, Stanley said. I suggest we go, said his lawyer with a sense of urgency in her voice. I'll be okay, said Zero. His eyes shifted toward Mr. Pendansky on one side of him and to the warden and Mr. Sir on the other. There is nothing I can do for your friend, said Ms. Marengo. You are released pursuant to an order from the judge. They'll kill him, said Stanley. Your friend is not in danger, said the attorney general. There's going to be an investigation into everything that's happened here. For the present, I'm taking charge of the camp. Come on, Stanley, said his lawyer. Your parents are waiting. Stanley stayed where he was. His lawyer sighed. <sighs> May I have a look at Hector's file, she asked. Certainly, said the attorney general. Ms. Walker, go get Hector's file. She looked at him blankly. Well? Uh-oh. The warden turned to Mr. Pandansky. Bring me Hector Zeroni's file. He stared at her. Get it, she ordered. Mr. Pandansky went into the office. He returned a few minutes later and announced that the file has apparently mis been misplaced. The attorney general was outraged. What kind of camp are you running here, Ms. Walker? The warden said nothing. She stared at the suitcase. The attorney general assured Stanley's lawyer that he would get the records. Excuse me while I call my office. He turned back to the warden. I assume the phone works. He walked into the camp office, slamming the door behind him. A little while later, he reappeared and toward the war told the warden he wanted to talk to her. She cursed, then went inside. Stanley gave Zero a thumbs up. 
Caveman, is that you? He turned to see Armpit and Squid coming out of the rec room. Squid shouted back into the rec room. Caveman and Zero were back out here. Soon all the boys from Group D had gathered round him and Zero. Good to see you, man, Armpit said, shaking his hand. We thought you were buzzard food. Stanley's being released today, said Mr. Pendansky. Way to go, said Magnet, hitting him on the shoulder. And you didn't even have to step on a rattlesnake, said Squid. Even Zigzag shook Stanley's hand. Sorry about, you know. It's okay, said Stanley. We had to lift the truck clear out of the hole, Zigzag told him. Took everybody in C, D, and E. We just picked it right up. It was really cool, said Twitch. X-Ray was the only one who didn't come over. Stanley saw him hang back behind the others a moment, then returned to the rec room. Guess what, said Magnet, glancing at Mr. Pendansky. Mom says we don't have to dig any more holes. That's great, Stanley said. Will you do me a favor, asked Squid. I guess, Stanley agreed somewhat hesitantly. I want you to, he turned to Miss Mar Marengo. Hey, lady, you got a pen and a paper I can borrow? She gave it to him, and Squid wrote down a phone number, which he gave to Stanley. Call my mom for me, okay? Tell her, tell her I said I was sorry. Tell her Alan said he was sorry. Stanley promised he would. Now, you be careful out in the real world, said Armpit. Not everybody is as nice as us. Stanley smiled. The boys departed when the warden came out of the office. The attorney general was right behind her. My office is having some difficulty locating Hector Zeroni's records, the attorney general said. So you have no authority over him, asked Ms. Marengo. I didn't say that. He's in the computer. We just can't access his records. It's like they've fallen through a hole in cyberspace. A hole in cyberspace, Ms. Marengo repeated. How interesting. When is his release date? I don't know. How long has he been here? Like I said, we can't. So what are you planning to do with him? Keep him here confined indefinitely, without justification, while you go crawling through black holes in cyberspace? The attorney general stared at her. He was obviously incarcerated for a reason. Oh, and what reason was that? The attorney general said nothing. Stanley's lawyer took a hold of Zero's hand. Come on, Hector, you're coming with us. That was a 